I feel really privileged to be, to, I feel honoured to be able to stand up here and talk on behalf of the young people that I've had a privilege to work with over the last 10 or so years with the REACH Foundation. There's two things I want to do today. I want to talk a bit about what they've taught me over the last 10 years and I want to give you a little bit of an experience um, of some of the work that I was really lucky to get as a young kid with REACH and now I've been really privileged to get to pass on. So I want to start off by talking a bit about about, um, just give you a bit of an idea about what REACH is. REACH is an organisation that works with young people. We work with just under 50,000 young people a year throughout Australia. We've got a base in Sydney and Melbourne and there's a booth outside. Um, we, the, the, the key thing to REACH is that we work with all young people. So a lot of the, I really love that panel. Uh, one of the things that we try and do is is to try and get all young people in a room, not necessarily kids that have issues or are at risk. They, they are in the room working with other kids who are supposedly doing really well at life. One of the things that we look at is that we're all on a journey. Like Whether we're young people or we're adult, adults sitting in this room right now, we're all trying to live life and it's not always easy. It goes up and down and we all need a space where we can talk about how we get on with the journey that life is and so we try and create that space and and move away from the idea of there's an issue there or um, it's more about how you go in life and let's have a real conversation about it. The other thing is that uh, our, wor our workshops are run by young people and I'll talk a bit about the impact that that had on me and and the last thing is that we've worked with about um, half a million people over the last um, two decades or so. But I'll, rather than the facts, I, I kind of want to give a bit of my take on what REACH was to me. So as a kid, I... Um, I was, I was about this high until I got to 17. I had a late growth spurt. Um, I had the same red hair that I've got today, but it was a lot redder. I had braces um, and I didn't get over like 45 kilos. I was as white as I am today. And so I was, me and Brad Pitt were pretty much the same person. <laughs> um, I, I was struggling with the ladies. Um, <laughs> And so my way of dealing with it, in all honesty, is that back then I couldn't make the jokes I can make about it today. When I looked in the mirror, I didn't like the person that I saw. I, I didn't feel like I matched up. I watched the movies, I watched Home and Away and all that crap, and I saw who the hot people were and I saw who the ugly people were and I felt like I was more in the ugly category. And it impacted me. I, I didn't have a whole lot of confidence. The way that I dealt with it was, I had this vulnerability sitting inside of me that I was trying to hide away so badly that I put up this mask and I, I was a really brutal kid. I was really nasty. Um, I was a smart ass and I was really cutting. I saw what other people didn't like about them because I knew so intimately what I didn't like about myself. And I'd let them know about it if I thought they were a threat of any, any kind. And so I was, I was a bit of a naughty kid. Like I, I, my grade six teacher called me Mr. Naughty for a whole year. Um, I egged her, don't worry about it. I got her back, I got her house. I, I proved her right. Um, and so I went through high school kind of getting bad reports and not being the best kid. And, um, you know, I had numerous teachers who thought I, there was something a little evil about me. But really what it was that I was, I just didn't like the person that I was. And I was, I was projecting that on everybody around me. Um, and when I was 17, one of the best things that's ever happened in my life happened to me. I turned up at a room at my high school in Frankston, um, down on the coast in, in, in Victoria. And I'd been told to go there by a friend. And there was 30 people turning up in our drama room to do this REACH workshop. And as soon as I got there, I saw this group of teenagers there, about 30 of them and some of them I would want to hang out with at school because they look kind of popular and some of them I judged straight away um, and, I, and I, I was pretty harsh about my judgments of them and so I wanted to leave and I went to leave and this guy came out his name was Sam and he said oh you know where are you going and I said oh, I think I've made a mistake I'm just gonna go home um, and he said listen if if you if you stay and you think it's shit then you never have to come back um, and and, but if you stay and you like it, then maybe you'll get something out of it. And for me, I was like 17. This guy just swore at me. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and 
And so I, I, so I stuck around. I was like, all right, I'll stick around. You know, this guy seems pretty cool. Um, and I went into this room, and it's something I'll never forget. I still remember exactly where I was sitting. I was sitting in this circle. I was over on this side, and I was panicking because you had to say why you were there and your name. Um, and I didn't want to talk in front of anybody um, because I knew how harsh I was with anybody who spoke up. And what changed for me that night and in the next five nights that I went to this thing was I got to see teenagers that I would usually judge because we're all so good at putting up the barrier and looking like we've got it together. I saw the secret life that they lived um, and it inspired me. Like as a 17 year old, I was blown away and I still remember certain kids. There's a kid, Kieran, that almost brings me to tears because of the kind of good person that he was despite the life that he was living at home. And I thought he was a genuine hero. I was like, how can this kid go home to that every day and cop that when I've got two loving parents and a beautiful house to go home to and I'm this nasty kid, how can he take that on, go to school, get picked on by people like me and then he turns up here with this great heart and this really lovely guy. Um, so I felt like for the first time I started getting educated on what life was about, you know, like what people were about, what was going on. I got addicted to it. It was real. It made me feel something. Um, it was challenging me. And it's the first time in my life that anybody ever looked at me and said, you know what, you got something awesome inside of you. Um, and Sam and Carly, the two guys that were, uh, uh, guy and girl that were running this course, they were only a couple of years older than me. And they genuinely thought there was something inside of me. I couldn't see it yet but they could see it and they were telling me about it. Now only a couple of years older and it blew me away because I believed them. I knew that they, were, that they were being truthful. And so I went on this journey to try and realize it for myself. And I'm so eternally grateful to those guys. They're friends of mine now and they get awkward when I thank them for it, but, but they, they really managed to change my life around through this program. So that's a, a little bit of my story. I gotta go back to my notes because I panic and I forget everything. Um, so that led to me getting to run the programs. I eventually kind of got the courage up to start. They backed me and said, you've got something and you can run these courses and you're going to be able to pass it on and all that kind of stuff. And so I ru started running programs for young people. In the last 10 years, I've had this absolute fortune of getting to work with thousands of young people all over Australia and they've taught me so much. I got to say, when you walk into a room and everybody's got their, you know, guards on, they're trying to suss you out and work out what's about to happen. Once they drop those and they start to talk about the heroic stories that they live, they, they, they blow you away. And I, I have grown so much. There's no chance I'd be standing here on this stage if I hadn't have been given perspective by kids that are often half my age or younger. Um, you know, we work with primary kids up, up to 18 and they're incredible. So I want to share a little bit of what they've taught me today. The main thing that I've learned is that I'm in awe of teenagers, and I think we all are, that's why we're here. Um, and young people in general, they've got this life about them, and, they, and they're not all that good, they're not as good as we are at hiding it away yet. They laugh, they, they talk out of turn, they've got this character about them, they're infectious, they're incredibly resilient, they're often living secret heroic lives that they don't feel that they have the right to tell because they think it's a curse, and it doesn't match up with the Truman Show idea or their Facebook profile, and so they think if they share it, then they're done for. And, and what we try and create is just an environment where you can go share that story because that story is not going to define you. It's going to help you teach you what you're made of. Um, and once young people start sharing those stories, it's as simple as trying to reflect that back to them and, and show, them, show them what what they reveal when they get honest and they get vulnerable and they share the things that they're most scared of and to say, that's you, that person that's living that journey, that, that's you and we want you to realise that. So I want to give you a bit of an experience of this. It's kind of hard to explain. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a thing called a sensory. So it's like a, a, a meditation, um, but it, it, it's kind of like a movie through your mind. I'm going to tell you an open-ended story, and you just imagine the picture to it. And, um, and I'll see you on the other side. So where you are, all you need to do is close your eyes. Um, you don't have to, but it helps. And go along on the journey with me.
I just get a little bit more volume on that? Yeah. So where you are, I just want you to simply picture yourself at the end of this conference. I want you to picture that you've headed home and you're standing outside the front door of the place that you live in. So I want you to see yourself standing there really clearly. You know this front door like the back of your hand. You're just kind of standing there with whatever bags you've got you're taking in. You can feel the weight of the bags on your hands. You put them down, you take out your keys and you feel the keys exactly the way that they feel in your hand. And you open up this door, that familiar feeling of opening it up. As you close it behind you, it makes that same familiar sound. And for some reason, nobody's home. When you let your imagination take you this place, nobody's home, the place is empty, it's just for you. You walk inside and you head to the lounge room. In the middle of the lounge room is this box. It's this big old box with dust all over it. It's got your name written on it. And you don't remember seeing this box or where it's from. You start to open it, you take the tape off, you open it up, and as you go through this box, you find all of these mementos. Things, memories from different times in your life, awards and uh, different photos, all these loose photos in there that trigger all these memories. It's got all this stuff that's just rich with the life that you've lived. And you're wrecked after this conference. The last thing that you pick out is this picture of you when you were a teenager. Just kind of looking at it. You lie down on the ground, just kind of start to almost daydream. And before you know it, you find yourself standing outside the gates of the high school that you spent most of your time at. Just kind of looking at the front of this high school. And it kind of looks small now that you're back there. You walk inside the gates and you start to wander around. And as you do, you remember different classrooms that you're in, you remember different memories that happened, where certain groups used to hang out. All this stuff comes flooding back in. Remember what it sounded like at recess and lunchtime and the place was going mental with life. As you walk past certain classrooms, you remember being taught in there, you can hear the teachers' voices almost. Finally, you end up in that part of the school where you used to hang out most. And when you get there, you see that there's a teenager already standing there. They're not facing you, you can't quite see their face. You just kind of walk up and as they hear you approaching, they turn around and look at you. And as they do, you know exactly who this is. This is you when you were a teenager. Looking back at yourself, you start to realise you know everything that they're about to go through, everything that they're going to experience, everything that they'll see, all the people that they'll meet. And so you decide in this moment, I'm going to offer them a piece of wisdom. One thing that I say that hopefully they'll remember for the rest of their time. And as you stand there, you deliver that piece of wisdom. And as you do, how do they react? And then they turn around and they kind of smile at you and they deliver a piece of wisdom back to you about your life now. Maybe it's about something that you've kind of not been thinking enough about or they want you to do more of, but they just give you a piece of wisdom back. And then they turn around and wander away and you're left sitting there with this piece of wisdom. Now, I want you to hold on to that thing that they said. And in a moment, really slowly, you're going to just come back into the room, feel the chair underneath you. Slowly start to wiggle your toes and fingers and wake yourself up a bit. And with the person next to you, I just want you to share what was that piece of wisdom that the teenager shared with you. Just really quickly with the person next to you. I might be a bit awkward and a bit weird. Just want you to kind of step through that. Acknowledge it if you're freaking out. Maybe you got a crush on them. So what was that piece of wisdom that the young person shared with you? Am 
I'm only going to give you about another 20 seconds with that. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to wrap you up there. I know I gave you no time at all, but I don't have any time. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to hear two of these pieces of wisdom. Um, so I'm going to throw it out to the group, a couple of brave souls somewhere in the room. Get one from each side and we've got a couple of mics either side here. Um, would I be able to get the lights up on the room? Put it back on you guys for a second. Um, so I'd love to just hear from two people. Um, have we got some hands up there? Yeah. Yep, brilliant. Okay, can we please get a mic up there? Sorry. You're all right. You don't need a mic. You've got a great voice. And someone over here. Brilliant. Thank you. Me so we'll first. start up here at the back. Okay. Um, I don't have a great voice like Jordan. Um, my piece of advice um, to myself was don't worry so much about what other people think about you. Because high school is renowned and infamously known for, for feeling judged and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But then the piece of advice that came the other way was yeah. do whatever the heck you want to do with your life and oh. don't let other people stop you. I don't know where that came from, but I'm listening to it, so that's why I'm holding a microphone. That's awesome. That's brilliant. <laughs> right. Love that. Thank you. That was brilliant. And one down here. I'm not sure if I could top that. <laughs> um, I actually brought tears to my own eyes, which is yeah. hard to do. Um, what I said to my teenage self, because I know what, what was going to happen, was to be strong. Yeah. Um, but then the teenage self said back to me, you were always strong. Yeah. So I don't know if that's advice or if that's saying. Definitely, yeah. It's brilliant. And, and it's, it's perfect what you just said because the reaction that went off around was that, oh, you know, like everybody can kind of feel that. And I, I, I want to quickly mention, my time is out. Um, I'm, I'm always shocking with time. But I, I, want to, I want to quickly just clock the way that it feels when people share like that. Because I really want to acknowledge you both for sharing again, just quickly, because it's huge. Like, um, and whether you're working with 10 kids or you're working with 100 or you're working with 10 adults or, or, or 100 adults or 500, when somebody shares, we could, we could sit here all day and share those things because that's real and it affects us. Everybody can feel it when you hear somebody talk about their real life. And we've all got that buried in us and teenagers have it too. And they just need places to express it. So one of the things that I, I freaked out when, uh, well, I've been freaking out for about four months since I knew I was doing this. But I, I looked on the website and the three things that it says, how can we inspire teenagers? How can we, uh, sorry, how can we inspire young people? How can we teach young people? And how can we help young people? And if I'm talking on behalf of young people and the ones that I've seen, they have so much potential, inherent potential inside of them. I think that we can sometimes think, well, we were once teenagers as well. And if we were to go from that angle, then maybe it's how can we be inspired by young people? How can they inspire us? How can we be taught by young people? How can they teach us about the lives that they're living and what they're seeing? Because we can't possibly live all of those lives. And lastly, how can we enable young people to help themselves? Because most young people, they don't want to be helped. They want, to, they want support and they want that infrastructure so that they can know that they're capable of living their own lives. And they're doing pretty well with the, with the lives that they're living at the moment. Um, and so I, I could talk forever, um, and I would love to, but I just really want to say thank you for, for, for giving this time. And uh, we have a booth out side, a reach booth, if you want to come and just look at some of the programs that we run. But congratulations for being here and caring enough about our young people because they matter so much.